You know one thing they don't tell you when you're in school? How hard it's going to be to get a job once you're done with school. Hey YouTube, thanks for stopping by on this video. I just wanted to make a quick video because I was wondering if other people like feel the struggle and understand the struggle of, you know, being a college student and then trying to get a job once you're done with school. I've done some like quick little search searches around the internet, you know, trying to find articles and such talking about if other people find it hard getting a job after they're done with school. And lo and behold, I was, you know, not alone. I mean, look at this. Can't find a job. College grads can't find jobs. Why can't I find a job? Why are so many college graduates unemployed? This is crazy. <laughs> and I'm definitely not alone. So what's got me to this point? Well, you see, like I was saying earlier, college student myself, getting close to being done with school. And so, you know, what any smart college student would do when they're getting close to being done with school is start applying to some jobs out there, you know, because I don't know, to me, it makes sense to me to essentially try to have a job when you're done with, like right when you're done with school or right before you're done with school. If you can like start right before, because from what I understand, some places will hire students before they're done on the promise that, you know, they'll graduate at a certain time and have their degree or certificate at a certain time that they can show their employer that, hey, you hired me on the faith of me graduating. Here's my diploma. We're all good. You made a good choice on hiring me. But, you know, <laughs> me being a, I guess, programming student, I'm finding it really hard to get a job. And it's crazy to me because in Washington, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of jobs available. Available, I can't say that right. Avail available, that's probably why I can't get a job right there. I can't say that word right. Anyways, that's besides the point. What I'm finding is that it's definitely not easy finding a job for a, you know, programming student. I guess, especially for ones that haven't got their bachelor's degree, I'm not getting a bachelor's degree right now at this moment for programming. I do plan on pursuing it after I get a job in a field because right now the thing that I'm running into right now is that I need to hurry up and get a job because if I don't get one in like the next three months, I could lose my roof over my head essentially. <laughs> okay, not it's not that extreme, but it's, it's pretty close to that. Um, I need to hurry up and get a job because I need to start paying bills. I need to start making moves in life. I need to start doing things. I want to, you know, go places. I want to, you know, invest more time into my YouTube channel. And the only real way I could do that is if I have some money coming in. And if I have a lot more free time than I do right now, because as it is right now, I go to school half the day, then I work half the day, and then I'm on a road for like almost another half day. It's just crazy because I just need more time. I really need more time. I need more funds to be able to do things, but in order to do all that, you need a job. And you know what? This really reminds me of that one video. Uh, what is that video? It's that old casually explained video. Have you ever seen it? Uh, casually explained getting a job where this little art drawing, they go into this art uh, stick figure person is trying to get a job. So he goes to his building and says, I want a job. The person says, well, do you have a uh, education or a degree? The person says no. Uh, so then you got to get an education degree. Then you go to school. Well, in order to go to school, you need money. And so in order to do that, they, the person has to go get another like lower wage job. But he's overqualified to get the lower wage job, which is something I've actually run into a lot is that after I was terminated from my last job two years ago, uh, I have a link to that video down below of when I got terminated. Jeez, it's been two years now. Uh, I was finding that for all the jobs I was applying for, like all the lower level jobs, like like a delivery driver for Domino's Pizza and like, uh, where else did I apply? I applied to some, like Safeway. I've applied to Safeway and and uh, uh, what's that one show? Uh, Target and stuff. You know, I was like trying to hurry up and get a job so I could get back on my feet, like anywhere I could, so I can, you know, fund my way to getting a better job as soon as I could. Nobody would call me back. Everybody was pretty much saying that I was overqualified. Well, I guess they weren't saying if they weren't calling me back, but you know, I was just overqualified, I guess. Nobody wanted to talk to me. <laughs> it's crazy. And so it's just, I guess that's all besides the point. The point is that it's hard right now for me to get a job 
as a programming student and I've applied to a lot of jobs. Actually, I've been keeping track of the jobs I've been applying to on my handy dandy cellular device. And so these are the numbers I've been looking at. So I've applied for over 80 jobs, 87 to be exact so far. I've been applying for about a month or so, probably like a month, a little over a month. And so I've already been rejected for 38 of those jobs and I haven't heard back anything from 51 of them. So you gotta imagine how disheartening it is to have been applying for jobs for over a month now, 87 jobs only hearing back from 38 of them and every one of them being a denial and still have 51 other places that haven't responded to you yet it's very disheartening and uh which makes it suck even more is that you know my instructor would keep telling us that you know these programming jobs they'll ask for people with like three years two years three years five years of experience but they don't stick to it that hard he says that they will you know make exceptions they'll they just really want to weed out some of the people that don't have confidence in themselves and um you know only hire the people that do have confidence and that the experience numbers really doesn't matter that much unless you're applying for like a, a senior level position or a manager position you know anything above an entry or junior level position and so that's all i've been applying to <laughs> 87 entry junior level positions and not one has gotten back to me in a positive way so i'm beginning to wonder if uh what he's saying is actually all that true or not <laughs> because that was one reason that was one thing that really got me into the program in the first place because you know before you start the program they want you to do these like uh, a seminar they want you to stop by and attend a seminar so they can tell you what to expect in a program and what the jobs will be like and all that jazz but man I'm telling you right now it's not that easy and I've been going to schools for two years yes I know that's a long time to not have a diploma but lots of things happened along that way like i.e. me losing my job and then trying to figure out what to do financially so I could keep going to school and I had to take some time off and start up my investigation against my previous employer. So that's still going on. It's been two years of uh, investigating my previous employer. But you know, besides that, <laughs> now I'm getting close to the end. I'm almost there to my certificate, my .NET developer certification for, you know, Microsoft.NET, C Sharp, all that jazz. Um, I'm like a two quarters away from getting that and I'm running out of time. <laughs> I really need a job before, like right before my last quarter because I, I got, I need something. <laughs> I need something and nothing is going like anywhere near what was expected or what was told to me at the beginning of this program. I mean, there are tons and tons and tons of jobs available in Washington. Dozens, like hundreds even. There are a lot of jobs available in Washington. I'm trying to apply to every one that I can find that, you know, wants the entry level junior positions, but man, it's so disheartening. 87 jobs and not one good response back. And you know what, I, I'll, I'll admit, not every one of those jobs was in Washington. I think like seven of them were in Texas. Seven of the jobs I applied to were in Texas and I believe three of them denied me so far, so I still have a few uh, open considerations for the positions, but <laughs> that's, it's crazy. It really is crazy. They, when you go to school for programming, you really don't know how hard it's going to be to get a job, especially if you're not coming out of school with a bachelor's degree. And it's crazy to me how some of these programmers get jobs when they have no schooling. They haven't gone to school at all. They're self-taught. It's crazy to me how these self-taught programmers are getting these jobs over somebody with college education. And it makes me really wonder how easy it is for people that go through these code academies, um, how easy it is for them to get a job. It's crazy to me that how such a demanding field, you know, such an open field that has so many openings is so hard to get into it baffles my mind. But anyways, um, I'm going to be doing a series of vlogs essentially of what it's like to be a college educated programmer trying to get a job. I guess, especially a colored one trying to get a job. I have a unique name that, you know, 
I've been told that sometimes employers will see like a unique name and we'll just throw the application away because the name is so unique and out there. It's not a typical name. So I have that against me, my color against me, my non-bachelor's degree against me. I mean, I could put on these applications all at once that I'm attending school still, but it doesn't really matter. <sighs> it's, I just want, you know, all you programmers are trying to get into the field right now who are getting close to being done to know how hard it actually is to try to get a job. And it's kind of not fair because I'm not exactly done with school, so I can't. I shouldn't really expect much on one hand, but on the other hand, you know, there are self-taught programmers that are getting jobs. And it's really disheartening to know that these people that, you know, haven't had to spend a dime in school are getting programming jobs. And I'm in student debt right now. Can't find a job. It's been over a month. Not one, not one positive response. Not a phone interview, not an interview. Not uh, we're interested, answer some more questions for us so we can decide. Just nothing. <laughs> but 51 applications are still open, so I guess that's positive. You know, positive way to look at things. So <laughs> there's that. I just want to vlog my experience along the way so other people could see what it's going to be like and to be prepared. You know, especially if you're someone like me. It's not going to be easy. Anyways. Uh, tell me what your experience is like down below and if you have any tips for me Tell me down below because I really want to know them. I really I need all the help I can get right now because I need to get a job uh, I need to uh, I need to make some moves. I need some help And if you guys can help each other down below, you know If anybody's even really watching this if you're if you can help each other down below help me down below Tell me your experience down below. I'm really interested to hear you know, especially if you've gone to school or not Really interested to hear what you have to say Anyways, I think that's going to be it for this quick video, this vlog, and gosh, wish me luck. I'm out.